What is going on, Mana Clashers? This is episode one of On The Stack, the new show where we take a look at everything that happened last week in Magic News. I'm really excited because there's tons of stuff going on right now. There's lots of new card previews. There's lots of new features. There's lots of new secret layer stuff. And as much as I am on the fence about some secret layers versus others, there's some pretty cool stuff coming and I can't wait to get into it. So let's start with the news. Let me just grab my web browser preview here. Um, so the first news story we want to take a look at is some Oracle changes. Uh, several changes coming to cards occurring with the release of Unfinity, which is the new unset that just came out a few weeks back. You can find the official text of any uh, card on the Gatherer. Now, their website is horribly cropped, and maybe I could zoom out a tiny bit. And I just don't understand why... It is so harshly cropped to the left. Maybe I can just do this and drag this over. Beautiful. Let's let's just stick with this. Um, copying legendary permanents. So let's just get right into this new story. Again, these are Oracle changes as of October 18th, posted directly by Jess Dunks on the Magic the Gathering news page. The first uh, note here is copying legendary permanents. Many cards instruct you to copy a creature or other permanent and then tell you if it isn't legendary, if that creature is legendary. We've decided to remove the last sentence from most such abilities, although this is, in the most technical sense, a functional change to those cards. The only difference is making a permanent that isn't legendary continue to not be legendary. The gameplay with these cards will remain the same. So all they're doing is removing that last bit of the sentence. If the creature is legendary, um, things that make copies that aren't legendary will just say, um, copy a creature or other permanent that, and it isn't legendary. So you won't have to, to worry about it stating the other half of that sentence. That's half of the sentence is going to go away. And we just understand that the copy isn't going to be legendary. Therefore, it doesn't apply to the legendary rule. Um, the second one is landfall. Many cards with abilities that care about playing lands have the landfall ability word, while many others don't. Moving forward, we will be including the landfall ability words on cards that match this function of existing cards with landfall abilities. Similarly, we're adding the landfall ability word to most existing cards with similar abilities. Adding the ability word doesn't represent a functional change to any card. So all they're doing is going back into the archives of magic cards. Anything that has a trigger when a land enters the battlefield will instead say landfall instead of all the gobbledygook around land triggers. Uh, the next note is Surveil. Many cards, such as Curate, which is look at the top two cards of your library, put any card, any number of them, into your graveyard and the rest on the back, rest uh, back on the top of your library in any order, then draw, uh, contain instructions in their printed text that are the exact same as the Surveil keyword action, but don't use the word Surveil in their text. Moving forward, we've decided that when we want to use that ability on a card, we will use Surveil instead, and we've decided to update older cards with that text to match. This is a small functional change, and perhaps this will finally give my Demir Spy Bug deck the respect it deserves. I'm not holding my breath, though. The ch changing cards are... And then they've got a list of cards. So, there's a bunch um, in, in recent history. Cruel Witness, Curate, uh, Consider... Um, you know, Grim Flayer, Larder Zombie, all of these basically, Urg, Spawn of Turg, all of these basically do surveil. And so now they're just changing the Oracle text so that what these cards are doing are is surveilling. Um, this matters a lot because there are cards that have surveil triggers. If you surveil this turn, whenever you surveil, uh, things of that nature. So this... 
Uh, Oracle Change will now help those surveil triggers happen more often when cards are doing basically surveilling that don't say surveil on them. Uh, that's, that's just a fun... They've done this a few times in the past. Uh, these Oracle Changes are always welcome, and I applaud them for putting in the time and doing that. Then we've got Ungames. Several, several silver-bordered cards that referred to the silver border to other silver border cards, silver border games or similar received an update to include uncards from infinity that don't have silver borders. So they've basically changed the oracle on a few older uncards that let them reference the cards from infinity that don't have silver borders. Uh, Ambassador Blorpity Blorp Bloop. This is an uncard. Don't really care about that change. Animate objects. Also a bunch. So they're changing a bunch of Unfinity cards uh, with these Oracle changes. So there's a couple big changes up here at the top. Basically, they're going to keep using Landfall. They're going to try to use Landfall as a keyword on card text whenever they can rather than writing it out or using something that doesn't specify landfall. Um, they're removing the if that creature is legendary text from copy creatures or permanent cards. Just assume that if the copy or creature card says that it's making something that isn't legendary, then you can still copy a legendary creature. And then finally, the surveil mechanic is going to be errated into a bunch of cards that do surveil, but don't specify the surveil keyword to help with those triggers. The next news article we're going to have a look at is the one sec. I reorder my browser tabs better. Comprehensive Rule Changes, posted the same day uh, by Jess Dunk. Um, and this is a lot of stuff that has to do with the Unfinity set. I highly suggest checking this out if you're playing the Uncards. I'm not going to go through all of these right now because there's not a lot that apply to uh, standard cards. Um, uh, oh, actually, there is quite a bit. that. All right, well... We're going to ignore the top half of this article because it has a lot to do with attractions, stickers, rolling a die. Um, actually, rolling a die, there's quite a few standard and modern cards. So the rolling a die rules change. Several new rules have been added to the section to cover the way the modified results of die rolls or otherwise interact with them. Sure. Nothing actually explained there. Other game rules changes. With the introduction of the attraction deck, we now have three different kinds of supplementary decks that can be used in the games. The new rule def now defines those a little bit more firmly, and a new slew of rules throughout the document have been updated to refer to them. Um, here's a... So there, here's one here, 400.7B, 407I, and 611.3D. Sarah Paragon has a new kind of ability that has been subject of much discussion amongst rules-oriented fans, meaning people who are talking shit about it online. It has an effect that falls into the category of being very obvious when you read the card, but not entirely supported in the rules. If that, If it wasn't that it did something crazy or different based on the rules. Rather, it needed the rules to create a three-way handshake between the spell or land, the permanent it becomes on the battlefield, and the static ability printed on Sarah Paragon. That wasn't included in the last rules update, but these new rules, sub-rules, create that handshake now. Um... New rules explain how Magar of the Magic Strings, exchange of words, new subtypes. Okay, they've added a bunch of subtypes um, from both the 40k decks and the unset. New glossary entries, scheme deck, space sculptor, 
ticket symbol, yada, yada, yada. Um, not a lot of crazy rules changes here, just a lot of additions, some tweaks, some specific things that help rules work well with other rules. Other than that, a lot of this pertains to the Unfinity set, so if you're playing that a lot, loving it, definitely check out this comprehensive rules change um, article. It is on the magic.wizards.com website under news. The next thing we want to take a look at is they finally revealed the starter commander decks deck lists. So we're finally getting four starter commander decks. So basically a an introductory product that helps people play commander for the first time for cheap ish decks, affordable decks that have intricate workings, cool, unique commanders and come you can buy them in a set of four or buy them separately and get an entire play session ready to go and having fun we knew about this a, a while back um, but we hadn't seen any of the deck lists so starter commander decks arrived december 2nd right in time for the holiday gatherings hopefully you guys get to play some magic and some commander around the 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 gathering the holiday times uh, the perfect way to share the joy of commander games for the holiday season and beyond five different okay sorry i misspoke earlier there's five different decks i said four these are all two color decks so they wanted to get five um colors or five sets in uh, with everything you need to jump straight into a commander battle with friends in the box you get one foil etched legendary commander card and 99 non-foil cards including lands you get 10 double-sided tokens you get one paper deck box these deck boxes aren't that bad i have a few that kick around that i throw random decks in i have my draft set of lands and sleeves in one of these paper boxes they're not fantastic but they're not terrible uh, you get one insert with strategy advice for the deck you get one summary of the rules for playing commander you get one reference card with a guidance with guidance for what to do on your turn and then a bunch of punch out counters which they've started to include on the outside of the bin so the first deck we get to look at here is first flight helmed by esperia supreme judge um now they're terrible on their okay they're terrible on their low poly images but let's just take a look at this commander deck so Esperia is two white, white, blue, blue. So an Azorius commander for a six, four legendary creature Sphinx with flying. And whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker, you control, you may draw a card. So this is going to be an Azorius flying deck. There's going to be lots of a Maria angel, lots, lots of kind of what, what you're looking at is starter friendly. So nothing like insanely complicated um but still really powerful cards stuff like uh sharding sphinx is really great um wind reader sphinx is actually amazing uh there's there's lots tide skimmers okay warden of the evos isles is a great card uh yeah and then you've got some we've got a board wipe you've got uh return all creatures you control to its owner's hands, then destroy all creatures. You've got a time, another board wipe. It, it looks like a pretty decent, you know, spells kind of matter. Some artifacts in here. Lots of enchantments, which is great to see. Banishing Light, Snow Snare, Bow of Duty. That's a good one. Um, yeah, and then you've got your full list of lands, which is awesome. Moorland Haunt. Azorius Tap. Exile a creature card from your graveyard. Create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Cool. So yeah, these these the themes and the gameplay are going to be fairly straightforward for these. These again are introductory products. So we're trying to get more people into Commander. Therefore, pick one of these two color decks and, and sit down and play with them right out of the box. 
Uh, you've got some tokens, catbirds and spirits, pegasi and fairies, and then some elephants and thopters. The second deck is the Demir deck, and it's Gisa and Geralt, which is two blue black for a 4 4 human wizard legendary creature. When Gisa and Geralt enter the battlefield, mill four cards. Once during each of your turn, you may cast a zombie creature spell from your graveyard. So this is a Zombies Matter, Graveyard Matters, Gisa and Geralt deck. Um, oh, you get a Liliana Untouched by Death, which is really cool. Undermine is a really great card there. Um, Cemetery Reaper is awesome. Champion of the Perished, of course. So there's some, a lot of staple zombies to go around. And even some intriguing non-staples. Vela the Nightclad is not something you see very often. Lord of the Accursed is really good. Um, yeah. And then you get your dual lands and a bunch of islands and swamps. I haven't seen what printing of the lands they're going to do yet, so I'm intrigued to find out what they're adding into these starter decks. And then you've got some zombie and zombie army tokens, which is pretty standard in a zombie deck. The next one is Rakdos. It is Chaos Incarnate, Cardur Derm Doom Scourge, Derm Scourge. Uh, for two, and Garbage Andy would be so proud of me for speaking like that. Carter Doom Scourge is two black and a red for a 4 3 demon berserker legendary creature. When Carter enters the battlefield, until your next turn, creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able and attack a player other than you if able. Whenever an attacking creature dies, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So it's got a sort of goad mechanic plus a sort of blood artist mechanic on your uh, commander, which is pretty cool. Uh, you've got some interesting stuff like Obnixilis Reignited. Um, Quite a good set of... All of these have really great sets of Commander Staple uh, artifacts. We've got quite a bit more lands. Oh, Debaser is really cool. Lots of demons, lots of constructs. That's That seems like a pretty fun deck. I don't play a lot of uh, red, but this seems pretty interesting. And then you've got Draconic Destruction. This is a Tarka World Render. Five red black. Oh, black. Five red green for a 6 4 dragon legendary creature with flying and trample. Whenever a dragon you control attacks, it gains double strike till end of turn. This is going to be dragon aggro all the way. And that sounds fun. Uh, you get one Planeswalker in the pack, which is a Sarkin, of course. Can't have a Dragon deck without a Sarkin in it. Uh, you got some pretty cool standards. Akum Hellkite. Um, Horde Smelter is really neat. Tyrant's Familiar is really good. Lots, lots of cool dragons. And then again, your standard set of artifacts. Some board wipes. Uh, some cool new tokens. These, these are pretty awesome so far. Uh, okay, so we got Selesnia, which is token, token Triumph. Uh, and it's helmed by Amara, Soul of the Accord. A 2-2 two, two Elf Cleric legendary creature for two. For just one green and one white. Whenever Amara becomes tapped, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. So this is tokens and lifelink. Both of the things that Selesnia wants to do really badly. Uh, you get a, a Johnny, Call of the Pride, which is pretty standard, pretty great. Uh, you get some pretty awesome, oh, Hornet Queen stuff, Scavenger Ooze. This is a little dirtier than I think I thought it was going to be. Eternal Witness. 
This is a pretty powerful uh, tech. Okay, okay. White Sun Zenith, nice. Again, standard artifacts, enchantments, lands. Um, it is Selesnia, so you'll probably have a few more enchantments to go around. I like that. I'm surprised there's so much... Um, so much kind of like powerful... I guess you're trying to make tokens, right? So these all these cards make tokens or buff tokens. I like that. It's not as like cookie cutter Selesnia as you might expect. Uh, and is that all five? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. So those are your five decks. Um, you've got Selesnia Flyers. You've got uh, Demir Zombies. You've got Rakdos Goad. You've got um, Gruul Dragons. You've got Selesnia tokens, and they all look pretty fun. I think it's fantastic that they're setting this up to be a successful product. They've had a lot of great success with designing and selling their starter products, their introductory products in the past, and this looks like it's no exception. Um, I think we want to get more people into Commander. We want to get more people into Magic. There's a lot of cards in these sets that are going to spur seasoned Magic players and collectors to pick them up. There's a lot of stuff in there that I would love to have in my collection. I, I might not keep them in the starter decks for very long, but it's very interesting. I would love to get a full set of these. Uh, it looks like the full set is going to be roughly 120 bucks. Uh, that's Canadian, so they're uh, about twenty dollars each. And they are coming out December second, so that's really cool. The next bit of news that we are going to see is why is this all weird? Okay, whatever. Uh, they posted a feature called Phyrexia All Will Be One Is Coming. They are featuring their next set. Their next next set. So the next set is the Brothers War. The set after that is Phyrexia All Will Be One, which is the culmination of this three-part mini-series of cards. Uh, starting with Dominar United, then going back in time to the Brothers War, now we're jumping to Phyrexia All Will Be One. Uh, it explores the plain of New Phyrexia, showing us what the home of the Phyrexians is like and what the dominance of the Praetor Elish Norn means. Here all will be one, and there's no power great enough to stop her from seeing that vision through. So we've got a set logo here, which is really, really nice. Um... I've been loving their logo treatments lately. Even their set symbols. Love this set symbol. Very simple. Um, very evocative. Has that Phyrexian life symbol in it. So people understand, just looking at the set symbol, that this is going to be a Phyrexian-centric set. Uh, then we've got some product photos. We've got uh, draft boosters. This gorgeous burgundy art with this fluttering Elish Norn up here. And then we've got some admirers down here. Uh, the set boosters with this really gorgeous darker treatment on this art. Uh, Elish Norn there. And then we've got the collector's boosters that has this neat stylized kind of circular um, Elish Norn design in a cartoony kind of hand-drawn uh, art style. Uh, I, I don't love this, like, peed on snow color, but uh, if it's got that kind of foilish treatment that they've been doing on sets recently, I think that'd be really cool. The bundles, which I'm going to pick up, of course, because I love the bundles. Uh, I'm glad it, they're going with the darker and burgundy uh, art for this. I'm intrigued to see what the actual box will look like. I really, really love them. 
Uh, and then we've got uh, Phyrexia all will be one jumpstart boosters, which again, they're doing jumpstart for all of the sets moving forward. Here's a look at the pre-release packs, which will be happening in February of 2023. So we've got some time. They're just letting us in on it because they're put it, sending these to manufacturer. They're getting ready to, um, you know, ship these out. They'll probably put the finishing touches. The cards are done. So they just need to, they've just been working on putting the finishing touches on the physical materials like these box sets, um, the promo art, the uh, set logo, that kind of thing. Those the kinds of things that don't need to be done until the last minute. Um, in addition to pre-release packs, each with six Phyrexian All Will Be One draft boosters inside, you can jump straight into the action with Phyrexia All Will Be One Jumpstart boosters as well. Whichever way you play with the new cards from Phyrexia All Will Be One, you can receive even more of the Magic 30 Anniversary promo available at pre-release events. So we've got some looks at some of the promo cards from the Phyrexia All Will Be One. So what they're doing is with each set, they're attaching a handful of promo cards to each of them and each of these promo cards exemplifies the height of magic at any given year so phyrexia all will be one it looks like it's getting 2000 to 2003 we've got core haven um riven dire which is in french portuguese Uh, you've got Exalted Angel and Temple of the False Gods. Oh, they've got a complete edition. Arriving shortly after Phyrexia All Will Be One releases on February 3rd, the complete bundle is packed with even more awesomeness from the set, including a traditional foil promo card, 40 foil basic lands, 12 Phyrexian All Will Be One set boosters, and 12 cards featuring a special foil treatment, two mythic rare cards, and 10 basic lands. We'll sh share more about the Phyrexia All Will Be One complete bundle and much more coming with our set. Uh, first look arriving December 8th. So this is like an extra collector's edition almost. That's really cool. As someone who, again, loves the bundle boxes, I tend to get a bundle box and then if there's a collector's edition or collector's bundle, I love getting those as well. Um, so yeah, that's our first look at Phyrexia All Will Be One. Products, set symbols, logos. Again, this is coming out um, at the beginning of February next year. So let's just enjoy the Brothers War coming up. Continue enjoying Dominaria United. If you're enjoying any of the supplementary stuff like the 40k Commanders or the Unfinity set, definitely enjoy those too but we've got these two standard sets dominar united and brothers war to last us till the end of the year and then beginning of february we'll have uh we'll go back to phyrexia and see what elish norn has been up to the next bit of news is the announcement and reveal of extra life 2022 we will be doing an extra life stream on friday february 4th on the twitch channel twitch tv slash erp we will be streaming some bioshock i believe we're doing a let's play of bioshock probably a 12 hour stream uh it's the day before my birthday but we really wanted to partake in extra life this year and game day just happened to land on my birthday so we're gonna do it the night before um extra life 2022 is also a big deal for Magic the Gathering players. And last year they started doing this really unique thing where they got children to draw what they thought a card would look like. And then they got Magic artists to draw a real version of it. Um, so yeah, they did a another set of these awesome cards that go to support Extra Life. We've got a Lathless. We've got a Birds of Paradise. 
We've got a Silver Legion. Oh, sorry, Sliver Legion. And these are what the magic artists have come up with. Uh, the non-foil versions are going for $40, and the foil versions are going for uh, $50. And then they're going to do some extra life shop stuff where you can get uh, play mats, uh, t-shirts. And then on Arena, you can get the card sleeves. And all of this stuff goes towards the, the charity that Extra Life and Magic are supporting. But also you can join the team at uh, Magic the Gathering Extra Life and fundraise for your own charity. Pardon me. Um, you can join the team and then select whatever charity you want or whichever one is on the list at Extra Life and you don't have to directly support necessarily the charity that magic has chosen to support um i know that there's some discourse and disinterest in supporting uh the charity that magic has supported which is why we're not going to be talking about it here but i think that there's there's a lot of fun to be had in you know Doing the thing you love to do. Doing the thing you're already going to be doing. Stream some magic. Play some games. Talk to your friends. It doesn't even have to be magic. Just joining Extra Life. Raising money for for sick kids. Supporting your local hospital and charity. We're supporting the BC Children's Hospital, which is just down the street from us. They're fantastic, and they help save and better the lives of thousands of children a year. And we can't wait to be a part of it. So that's it. They've announced. We'll take a look, closer look at these cards in a quick minute. Uh, here's a look at the extra life stuff. So you can get the play mat. You can get the Lathless play mat drawn by one of the magic artists. And then there's going to be a pin and a shirt. All which help support the charity. And, and that's really it. There's also a list of where to find the Brothers War previews. We can take a look at that real quick. Um, so the stories begin began on October 20th. Oh my god, stop clicking on things. So the story started publishing on October 20th. Right now they're up to part four, I believe. And then October 27th, they're going to do the MTG Bro stream. And that's not like a euphemism or a side hand. That's actually what the set is being called in short. Hashtag MTG Bro. Uh, November 11th is when pre-release begins. And then November 18th is release date for Magic the Gathering The Brothers War. Um, and then we've got previews which started start will start on the 27th during the daily mtg stream uh and then start rolling out from there the 28th to the 30th you've got the magic 30 event good morning magic uh the 31st and beyond oh they've uh busted their own website a little bit and then the, the previews run all the way to november 4th which is the week and the week end before pre-release on the following weekend, which is the 11th. And that's about it. So moving on to our last little news story here today is that uh, they announced the October secret drop, um, which is chock full of really neat stuff. There is a Post Malone, two Post Malone sets, He's a big uh, magic streamer and apparently makes music. I don't know. Then there's the uh, Secret Layer 40K or Warhammer 40K Orcs foil cards. Uh, then we've got the Age of Sigmar cards. Then we've got the Blood Bowl. If looks could kill. Special guest artist Junji Ito. Yes. The horrific Japanese manga artist Junji Ito is doing magic cards for the Secret Layer drop. And then we've got a second special guest, uh, Yoji Shinkawa, who is the artist behind all of the mech designs and character designs in the Metal Gear, Gear Solid 
video game franchise. He does all the concept art for all of the uh, video games. And they they were a big part of the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty set. There was a lot of uh, Yoji Shinkawa um, Planeswalkers. But this one is really unique because we've got some pretty standard commander cards using the Yoji Shinkawa art, which people are very excited about. Space Beyond the Stars, uh, the weirdest pets in the multiverse, and then totally spaced out. And then we've got this thing down here, which is the Commander's or the 30th Anniversary Countdown Kit. Uh, but let's jump into the card previews because I've got them all here. So this is your Post Malone Backstage Pass um, set. And this one is a Post Son of Rich, which is a play on the Yagma card. Hold on, let me move this into the middle of our screen here. So we've got Post Son of Rich. We've got Post Citadel, which is Bolus' Citadel. We've got Post Sigil, Jet Medallion. And then here's the lands. And the, these are nice. They've got the, the old border. And then uh, Post E has like done some scribbles and signed some of them, draw, drawn some things on them. These are some great little lands to collect. Uh, I love, love that it says at the bottom there, illustrations by Mark Poole, who did the actual art, and then and Post Malone, who did the art in the text box there. So we've got the, the islands, and the swamp, which is really colorful, the mountain, you are loved, my shiny. Uh, then we've got the basic forest, and that's like a duck. That says something on its stomach. Yeah, so it's it's cool to see them kind of celebrating a, a celebrity that has brought a lot of people's attention to Magic the Gathering. I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, they're particularly responsible for a lot of new vi viewers or new players, but that you can't deny the amount of attention that Magic and Wizards of the Coast has gotten since... Post Malone came out and started, I guess, promoting his fandom of Magic the Gathering, something he's been into for a very long time, apparently. Uh, then we get into the 40k orcs. So these are secret layer reprints of older cards that have the um, Warhammer 40k orcs theme. This one is Merciless Executioner as Orc Commando. This is Aggravated Assault with new art. This is Krenko Tin Street Kingpin, uh, who has been redubbed as Makari the Lucky Grot. I don't know anything about Warhammer Orcs, so I'm assuming that these might be fun little plays on, on Warhammer lore. Uh, this is Zurgo Helm Smasher who's been redubbed as Gazkul Prophet of the Wa. That's a pretty cool piece of art there. Um, and then there is this Devulja, which if you haven't played Warhammer or know, know anything about the orcs, one of the only things I do know about them is that they have this weird kind of Jamaican shorthand street slang where everything has weird syllables um, and they don't pronounce things properly. So having the vulture instead of the vulture is just kind of in their wheelhouse, which is a nice little flavor win. Um, then we've got the secret layer blood bowl additions, which is um, traditional cards reskinned as Blood Bowl themed. And for those that are unaware, Blood Bowl was an offshoot of Warhammer that was basically a bunch of English video game developers making a video game of what they thought American football was. And they skinned it with uh, Warhammer so that it became this big, gruesome, like PvP style 
football game where there's lots of blood and lots of killing and and it's, it was pretty fun it became a cult classic for sure um and they've reskinned some traditional magic cards in the style and namesake of blood bowl themes this one is touchdown which is approach of the second sun we've got reroll which is rewind uh bone splinters has been renamed both down <laughs> which is looks like they're just piling on now is the flavor text on that. Uh, Fling has been changed to throw teammate, which was a big play. If you played the orcs team in Blood Bowl, you got to throw your teammate all the time, which was awesome and hilarious. Uh, we've got Defense of the Heart renamed as Perfect Defense. Uh, and that's it. And then we jump over to If Looks Could Kill, which is a jack hughes special secret layer collection and these cards are maybe some of the most gorgeous art i've ever seen on magic cards if you took the card name and the text box and everything off of these cards i would have each and every single one of these on my wall I actually leave the card name on and everything give me oversized versions of these cards and they're on my wall hands down they're stunning Big shout out to Jack Hughes for these. Um, the first one is Azami, Lady of Scrolls. And just look at the, the art on this is insane. The use of colors, the use of backgrounds, this pink mist that they've got coming out from all of the corners and on the bottom. It's just stunning. Then they've redone Liliana of the Dark Realms, which is a classic planeswalker everyone loves. And look, the fashion and style of this is just gorgeous i can't believe it exists and i hope that everyone buys a million of these because it is astounding and i want more jack hughes old art cards uh the next is reflector mage they have since stated that the legendary frame topper around the name reflector mage was a a printing error or a a a file error they that will not be on the the final product because reflector mage is not a legendary creature but look at this person with this hole in their chest and these fringe on their arms and the pink suit and the weird cat in a bubble and they're standing in like a grass field after coming through this door it's it's just gorgeous the last um Jack Hughes card is Adaptive Automation, which is this gorgeous look at a automaton, a construct queen with this huge frill, this huge collar on this beautiful jacket, huge fashion. I, I want to see a whole fashion show. Um, I want to make a whole Jack Hughes deck with just these Jack Hughes. Uh, if looks could kill cards, I think they're stunning. This is the Junji Ito secret layer. So we've got four cards from Junji Ito um, and four cards from Yoji Shinkawa. Both sets of four are available in foil and non-foil, and both sets of four are also available in Japanese foil and non-foil. So you don't have to get the English versions if you don't want them. Uh, you can get the Japanese ones. They are Japanese artists, so... Um, whether you can speak or read or can translate Japanese, that is all up to you. Uh, the first card in the Junji Ito set is Carrion Feeder, an absolute staple. One black for 1-1 um, uh, one, one zombie that can't block, sacrifice a creature, put a 1-1 one, one uh, counter on it. Uh, Doomsday, which is a search your library or graveyard for five cards and exile the rest. Put the chosen cards on top of your library in any order. Lose half your life, round it up. Plague Crafter, another staple. And then Thoughtseize, which is amazing. Um, I'm almost tempted to buy four of these Junji Ito secret layers just because it's cheaper to get these Thoughtseizes than it is to get any other Thoughtseize. Uh, at $29.99 each, that's almost $15 cheaper. And then we've got the Yoji Shinkawa secret layer art. Uh, they've done Phyrexian Metamorph. 
uh tezzeret the seeker which is awesome love this art so much just tezzeret who's one of my favorite planeswalkers seeing tezzeret in yoji shinkawa art just is so nostalgic i played so much um of the first few metal gear, gear solid games and those instruction booklets with all of his art in it the art books that you could get at uh, bookstores was just amazing um, and this is just such a trip for me to see those two things kind of combine uh, skull clamp which is a commander staple uh, solemn simulacrum which again is another commander staple and and all of these cards look like they could be ripped right from the metal gear solid um concept art books and i think that's the point and people are getting really excited about them uh the next set is the um space among the stars secret lair drop which is a jeremiah solomon um artist series they've done imprisoned on the moon these these cards are actually really cool they've got a sort of west coast tattoo vibe to them and, and i think they're really gorgeous uh stasis which is a really interesting enchantment uh prismatic omen and this is such a colorful beautiful piece of art on this card uh, and wheel of sun and moon then we go into the what is the name of this secret layer? This is the the weirdest pets in the multiverse, which is an um, a set that features Omar Ryan art. Omar Rayan art. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I apologize if I'm not. Um, so they've done five classic magic creatures in this creepy, horrific. Um, kind of body horror style art. Uh, this first one is Laboratory Maniac. Um, they've got Stitcher's Suppliers. So basically they're taking cards that don't necessarily have anything to do with pets and adding creepy pets in. Uh, this little dog with the zombie attached the soda on one leg, but it's like holding a, a leg in its mouth. It's so good. Uh, Beast Whisperer, which is really awesome. I love the look on this elf's face. Uh, Vizier of the Menagerie, a Naga cleric, and he looks like he's trying to stop his crocodile from attacking his demon dog thing. Anyway, it's really cool. Uh, and then Wood Elves, which is one of the coolest arts. Again, they're like their facial expressions captured the way that one piece of this art has extensive detail on it and then as you get further away from it the details kind of fade away and fall off is really encapsulating um but i will point out that wood elves here has the best flavor text of possibly any magic the gathering card ever so it's wood elves two and a green for a one one elf scout and the flavor text is but should elves and then we've got uh to go along with the infinity set they're reprinting some lands totally spaced out galaxy foil lands uh which are just some standard lands that people put in a lot of commander decks um just with the cool space galaxy foil variant from the infinity set. So they got Ash Baron, Commander Beacon, which is an absolute staple, Fabled Passage, which is should be in every deck, and Strip Mine. And then we jump into what this 30th anniversary count. So I'm gonna bring up my webpage here again real fast. Um, Oh, wait, we're bring that down, bring this over, bring this over. Okay. So the 30th anniversary countdown kit is $150 and you're going to basically get, um, so it, in celebration of its 30th anniversary, they're making for the first time ever an actual magic advent calendar. Um, 
it's 30 days. 30 years means a set of 30 individually wrapped cards for 30 days of celebratory opening. But what are the cards, you ask? We've included one card from each year in Magic's history, starting with 1993, and it wouldn't be a secret layer without cool art, so we've gone through our Rolodex of secret layer collaborators and invited a bunch of them to the party, creating all new looks for every card, but that's still not all. Any card you open has a 30% chance, get it, because it's 30th anniversary, of being foil. Shining as bright as decorative winter as a decorative winter star. I could not say that. Um, and it's really cool. They've gone through all of the years and they've basically made a new art variant of really popular and beloved cards from these years to celebrate their 30th anniversary. Like, look, look at Squee. Look how cute little anime squee is it's so adorable um yeah i was going to go through them but i think because it's an advent calendar and should be a surprise to some people i think i'm not gonna go through them i will point out however that my favorite one is this one the shark typhoon so this is the vhs cover shark typhoon uh done by edgar sanchez hidalgo um it's absolutely stunning it's got all of the things you would find on a cheesy horror vhs uh box and the art is fantastic the layout and the graphic design is fantastic it's just the best i love it so much it's perfect um and i want it um and actually that brings up one last point i wanted to make is that this 30th anniversary countdown kit the 30 cards um kind of advent style calendar thing is is kind of what i would expect from them when it comes to making products designing products that celebrate magic's history give fans something cool and actually are enticing and exciting to open. They're exciting to talk about. Sure. Everyone gets the same 30 cards, so it's not unique or random or, um, there's not going to be a lot of trading going on unless you want two shark typhoons, but this, this is a celebration product. This is what a celebration product looks like. And I don't know whether this was Wizards of the Coast's idea or whether this was the team that designs their secret layers, but this exemplifies um, a pricey product that is still relatively affordable. Like you're still paying $150 for 30 cards, which is a lot of money. But for $150, I could only get five copies of Thoughtseize. So, like, the people are spending more money on really expensive cards than this. Whereas if you compare it to the news and the backlash that was the Magic 30th anniversary proxies, uh, I'll link my video to that down below. Um, this is a... This is a a home run this this is fantastic it gives people something to look forward to something unique for their experience their time their money um, it's fun you're celebrating the 30 years by doing one card from each year uh, there's a lot of cards in here that are extremely playable and people play with and the fact that it's relatively affordable you can open it like a an advent calendar um, it is this is just a big win so that is going to be all for episode one of On the Stack, a sh web show where we take a look at the week that was Magic the Gathering news related. Um, I hope that you all enjoyed this. And if you watched the video uh, this far, I thank you. I would love 
some some feedback if i need to move faster if i need to pick and choose news stories a little bit more should i be focusing on news stories from the community versus just gathering news from the source obviously there's going to be slower news weeks where i might need to search out for news stories from the community but for now there was enough to go over this is a, an almost an hour long show so i would love some feedback definitely throw a comment down below let me know what you thought of the pace what you thought of the layout should i be smaller should the news be smaller what are we talking about um should i cap this at a certain time i, I would love to hear your thoughts um, thank you so much for watching this show definitely leave a like and comment if you can and i would really appreciate a sub we're trying to get past a th certain threshold on um, subscribers to the youtube channel so that we can start investing some more time and funds into the production of the show the production of our twitch stream which winds up on youtube all the time uh thank you so much to game chops for the soundtrack to wizards for the the music to blue microphones to stream labs i love you all thank you all so much and may all of your opening hands be keeps and may all of your employ employees may all of your opponents flood out thank you